are we doing? I'm doing fine, Doctor. How are you doing? You anything for me, Jenny? You mean like an apple? Fall out of the teachers? No. Any concerns? I do as happens, yeah. I'm concerned about lack of reading material. Jenny, as we have discussed on many occasions, you being a rare case, we don't provide much in the way of reading material. Well, what's wrong with hello? I'm sorry if you think I was being impolite. Well, what's wrong with okay? Jenny, I can't simply say everything's going to be okay. I mean, you are aware. No, you're not getting it. I come here once a month and sat in the waiting room for sometimes up to an hour, and all they have to need is health and beauty. Is that all you people care about? <laughs> And I've read them that many times. I have to move on to the medical leaflets now. What I don't know about asthma, asthma and meningitis, can I have your job to tell you? Get some decent magazines. I mean, if you can't stretch for a lot, and okay. We'll take a break. Thank you. I could do with one. But for now... It's very well, thank you. We can't complain. How are you adapting to your new medication? Fine. Oh, they have been feeling a bit down, but that might be because I nearly, very nearly, had a job at the bus as a lifeguard. Your parent, Jenny. Your mother was concerned that you would have been in danger. A lifesaver in danger? How ironic. I got that job. The bass thought I could do it, and so did I. You had no right to do that. Instead of dwelling on a job you're unsuitable for, why don't you pick yourself up, stop feeling sorry for yourself, and get another job? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Oh, it's that simple, is it? Have you been smoking? Is that a side effect of a new medication? I've been a bit flushed, but... Jenny! Once. No! Sometimes. <sighs> yeah? Well, you should think about quitting. You have enough to contend with without all that. I've been looking you up on the internet. Really? I know what you think about me. Do you? You think that I shouldn't exist, don't you? You believe in that you, Jenny, thing. So if something's up with Weber, they can get rid of it. You shouldn't believe what you read on the internet. I've read your work, though. Sounds quite nice, that word, eugenics. Sounds like some new celebrity beauty product. Well, it is in a way, innit? Eugenics. Because you're worthless. Why do you have me in potential care? I do care, Jenny. That's why I... That's what my studies are all about. Well, you've got it wrong, and I hope one day you find that out. If you really want to help, if you really want to make a difference... Yes. We'll get some decent magazines in the waiting room. I mean, you're obviously all for <laughs> perfection, aren't you? That's why I love them magazines, because no one is that perfect. I know a photographer, and he said they're all airbrushed anyway. Thank you. I'll bear that in mind. You do that, Dr. Sol Holiday. Sort of chirping for someone so horrible. See you next month. And finally, a report just come in from local Proud and Loud Disabled Actors Group. This is regarding a disability report, and it says euthanasia was legalised in the Netherlands in April 2001. In 2002, a Dutch couple whose baby was suffering from a metabolic disorder that had resulted in abnormal bone development asked doctors to help their baby die. The baby was in severe pain and was only expected to live for up to 30 months. At seven months, doctors finally agreed. Each year in Holland, at least 15 seriously ill babies, most of them with severe spina bifida, are helped to die by doctors acting with parents' consent. But only a fraction of those cases are reported to the authorities. 
because of doctors' fears of being charged with murder. At home in Britain, there is an equally disturbing trend for women to be offered abortions when it is known that the baby they are carrying has a congenital abnormality, for example, Down syndrome or cleft palate. Statistics from the British Medical Association state that in the UK, the vast majority of abortions beyond 24 weeks are on the grounds of serious fetal abnormality. In 2002, 117 abortions were carried out greater than 24 weeks. 114 of them, 97.4%, were because of serious fetal abnormality. Many, Many argue, argue that Down syndrome and cleft palate. I'm turning this shy off. Fetal. I prefer to watch Good Food Live. No, man, it's that new thing, you know, after this. Pin up perfection. Oh, aye. Aye, it's where they find the most gorgeous looking person in the whole wide world. Yeah, and it's meant to be that good. No, Julie. Can't watch that when I'm eating. What do you mean? Well, it's not nice to watch people who are starving when you're tucking into a plate full of chippy. <laughs> ha ha, very funny. Listen, you have to be really committed to be that beautiful, you know. I'm going to Slim Club me from next week. There's nothing on you. Listen, you're nobody these days until you can fit into a pair of those zero jeans. Your jeans are zero. Which have not paid for. Which reminds me. See whatever van they fell off, I've got a pair of slips in a size six. Ma'am! How did you get on at the doctor's, love? Did you ask her out what you saw on the internet? I did, yeah. What did she say? Nothing. If she has it her way, there'd be nothing but pin up perfection. Well, there'll be none of us left then, including her. These programmes, they're no good. No, ma'am. These programmes are great because no one is that perfect. That's why I love her. Yeah, well, I'll be fitting into a pair of those zero jeans me soon. Yeah, and instead of being an ugly cow, you'll be a skinny ugly cow, won't ya? <laughs> Shut it, Jenna. Tonight, and welcome to tonight's Spaz Factor. Yay! Many haven't made this far due to delusional your parts of the perfection. Yay! But tonight we are playing for the prize of a body transplant for the ultimate Spaz who really deserves it. Yay! For your enjoyment tonight, they will be attempting to do a show which will, will include dancing, singing, oh, and typical disabled theatre. Please remember that you're voting the crappies to go through. <laughs> so, God bless them. Let's meet the group. And here they are. Tadio. Buzz food and eight's work. <coughs> Michael. <laughs> Loves that life is good. Craig. Beats politics. <laughs> Jenny. Loves lots of interest. Chris. Plus Foster's and A Stella. <laughs> Toby T. Hey. Toby T. nothing. <laughs> Kelly. Hates people who have an attitude. <laughs> Janet. She can't open her fingers so far. They can't open it round, which gives her an advantage. She's disqualified. <laughs> well, that to be fair, ladies and gentlemen. And here is Danielle. Everyone say, oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure what she likes or dislikes, I'm sure it's all lovely. Oh. oh. <laughs> and here is, well, what should be Laura. She's obviously late. Again. Her hips are the wrong way round. She doesn't know whether she's coming or going. <laughs> and now... For an example of how it all will work, Michael, you give us a dance, please.
are capable of doesn't deserve the prize of the body transplant. Let's hope they give you a fantastic performance and be in the running for the prize! My name is Dr. Margaret Solly Holliday, and I'm a practicing GP in Salford. I have many disabled patients, including Jenny Ashton, who is a rare case suffering from charcoal marie tooth syndrome, commonly known as CMT or HMSN type 1. Like Jenny, many of my patients live like outsiders. They are discriminated against and oppressed. They lack the basic skills to be employable and are a burden on the health authority and, to a larger extent, their community. I would like you to consider this as I explain the idea of eugenics. In 1883, the scientist Francis Galton, a cousin of Charles Darwin, first coined the term eugenics. His idea being that people with good genes, <coughs> eugenic, should be encouraged to have children, and those with bad genes, diagenic, should be discouraged in order to reduce the occurrence of disability. The dictionary definition of eugenics is the study of hereditary improvements of the human race by controlled and selective breeding. In 1916, the American, Margaret Sanger, a key figure in the development of eugenics, opened the first birth control clinic in the US and wrote, The most urgent problem we face today is how to limit and discourage the overfertility of the mentally and physically defective. So, in order to move forward with eugenics and move away from its dark past of Nazi Germany and Tiergarten IV, we need to see eugenics as the only way forward that the human race can evolve into a stronger species. Surely we all hope that the human race has a better chance in the future? Genetic studies and interventions can and do secure this. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions? Where is the line drawn? Sorry? Where is the line drawn? I mean, will you eradicate all bones with a disability at later in life as well? No, you see, it's this sentimentalised view that stunts progress in this field. I have many patients with disabilities who I'm sure would argue that they would have preferred their lives to have been different. If you look at this scientifically... It's all very well looking at it scientifically. What about the effects of the families and the loved ones? It's the effects of the families and the local communities I'm thinking of. The time and the quality of life of not only the child, but the families of a local community providing additional care will be affected. Why do you dismiss the role of disabled people in our society? Surely you must be aware that a disabled person can give birth to a baby, that you would see us to at the time of 
Won't they? As I have already said, Charles Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton, held the opinion that people with good genes, eugenic, should be encouraged to have children, and those with bad genes, diagenic, should be discouraged in order to reduce the occurrence of disability. There are well-known supporters of this theory, including Winston what? Churchill and D.H. Lawrence. But 1.5 million disabled people were contributing to the war effort here at home, while the Nazis were killing over 70,000 disabled people, just like the animals. What is your response to that? I am in no way being detrimental towards disabled people. As I have said, many of my patients are disabled. We are talking about securing a stronger future by isolating weaker genes and eradicating defects. But where's the line drawn? Where is the line drawn? Security! I can give birth to a baby that is not disabled in any way and security. don't worry, I don't need security because I am going anyway. <coughs> no more killing! Security! No more I had 12 x-rays done and it hadn't shown up and the only time I found out was when I had to go to hospital over a water infection. The doctor wasn't happy, they thought he had a cyst or something, they wanted to do a test but I was scared about what the outcome was. I didn't want to know if it was something bad so I discharged myself and went home. But two hours later, I went back in a lot of pain. And within 10 minutes of being there, I found out I was pregnant. And the pains I was having, I was in labor. I was due to go on a residential to the Lake District where they had Victoria. It was hard to get my head around that my life was gonna change forever. She's nearly eight now. She's tall for her age, but very old headed. She has long brown hair and blue eyes. We look similar, and a lot of people think she's my sister. She's very protective over me, and if her friends ask why I'm in a wheelchair, she says it's because her legs don't work, and she's special, but she's still my mum. Victoria is not disabled whatsoever. She wants to go horse riding. She does karate, and she wants me to do it too but she knows I can only do the upper body. I go and I watch, and they keep trying to get me to do it as well. I want to, because it's something we can do together. She makes me feel proud, because she's doing so well at school. She's such a good person, and very helpful. She's got a good attitude towards life, but she's not by any means an angel. She's just like any other kid, Except she's my kid, and I'm proud of it.
What's the dangerous weapon? Oh, yeah, John, we've heard it ten times now. <laughs> no one's telling Laura that, actually. She's not heard it before. She has, John, and we're all here two weeks ago. Say, somebody finds it funny. Yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> Told me, teacher, your notes from two weeks ago. Yes, it does, been love, yeah. Yeah, but it's so funny, though. Yeah, it's really funny. Well, it's funny, you've been here by now. Hope's cars are broken now, then. We're meant to go on all the plate tonight. See what it was, we want to be out like Mr. T's. Don't look at the story, we all ain't now, stop. Can I talk about the pigeon? No! no. Good evening, everybody. I'm afraid Tom can't make it this evening. But he's sent his friend Magenta, who I've been told is very good at drama workshops. <laughs> Hi, group! Hi, Hi. Just give me a moment to just robe myself. I can feel your energy, and I'm feeding off it. There's a lot of love between you. And rather than explain my role here, as a workshop facilitator, I'd like to do an experiment modern dance. Feel free to join in. The wind is in for my recovery. Last night I couldn't sleep. Oh, you know it sure is hard to leave here, Carrie, but it's really not my home. Filthy. I've got beach tar on my feet And I miss my clean white linen And my fancy French cologne Oh, Carrie, get out your cage And I'll put on some silk Oh, you're a neat old daddy, but I like you Come on down to the mermaid cafe a bottle of wine and we'll laugh and toast and laugh. It's so fun next week, Kellen. Yes, Kelly, don't worry. Tom's back next week. Good. 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 Another round for the bright red pill who keeps me in this tourist town. Come on, Carrie, get out your cake. I mean, there are people suffering needlessly. And, you know, I watch them come into the surgery and they've got a low quality of life. I mean, that's my point, you know. Oh, thank you. And I yes. mean, what, what effect is this going to have on future generations? Well, it's no, hard to say. I mean, I mean that, is, that is hard to say. I mean, the, the difficulty being. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. I, mean, I find it quite ridiculous now that you can just choose to have a cesarean now. It's like, it's madness. I mean, it should really be for just medical intervention, I think. Having a termination if your child's got something wrong with them. You know, it's bringing it back to my point. You know, it, it's, it's really now about the next sort of. The future is about bringing people, children to this yeah, world yeah, yeah. That, that are, you know, able-bodied and, and, you know, otherwise, it goes back to the same point, it's it's not fair on the people that have a disability or they're born with something um, physically or, you know, whatever wrong with them. Right. Um, you know, financially it's massive, it's millions, of, well, billions of pounds of money is spent on each sort of country in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And something that really we can we can stop. I'm, I'm sure there's people with disabilities, all their family and friends, who actually secretly think it, it is the right thing to do because some of them don't have a quality of life. They really don't. Putting the speeches together, 
the research the talk the spoon you know what I, what I feel you know obviously very passionate about and it, it's just really opening these these, these boundaries and barriers that it brings great yes yeah. I do a lot of sport you know and I do walk I walk the dogs as well quite a lot mm. you know. I love going every now and again for the fucking shampoos <sighs> Wasn't it just? Oh, yeah. oh. Are we out? Is that it? Thank you. I guess so. Come on, throw it off properly. Throw it I don't think I felt this woozy for ages. <laughs> oh. I've hopped off the lock properly. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> yes. What did they say if you saw me now? <laughs> extremely well to recover so quickly. She can swallow and feed herself without help. Can you just try, Margaret, to speak one word at a time to push this process too quickly and stun your progress? She's a doctor. She doesn't need to be spoken to like an idiot. I appreciate your concerns, James, but your wife is no longer that person. She's progressing really well, but it is now clear that it is very unlikely she will ever make a full recovery. Speak to her, not me. She's not invisible. Mr. Sally Holiday, I know you're very upset, but please try to understand we are here to guide you both through this. This new one here is Doctor, aren't you, love? Fancy that, a Doctor. We are growing up in the world. Well, I always said we have to do practically everything but wipe their asses. Does she know what we're saying? I don't know. There's jelly tonight, love. Would you like that? Blink, if you'd like that, love. Did they go deaf when they've had a stroke? I don't think so. Well, stop bloody shouting then. Margaret, this is June Adams. She'll be caring for you at home whilst... Damn, don't look at me like that. I have to work. I can't take on this role. Try a few steps at a time. Don't push things. Just a few steps around the house. Then soon we can go for a little walk. 
I don't want to go for a little while. I want to get back to work. But Margaret, you know you can't do that again. <sighs> Just look on the bright side. You can do all the things you never could before. You've got all the time in the world. I can't do anything. But you will do. Things will be different, but you will do what you want. Don't patronise me. I'm your superior. I'm only trying to help. I want to go out. I've just started dinner. On my own. It's not a good idea. Why don't you wait till James gets back and he can take you? I'm not a child. I'm going out now. What's up? I can't get into the fucking shop! Well, one minute, don't, 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 don't go off on your, on yourself. Just, just calm down, just calm down. Alright. What do you want? I want you to fuck it in the sink, but I can't get in the fucking shop. Give me our bog gun. I don't mean to go far away. Are you sure? Be a minute, yeah? Okay, Just stay there.
I'm sorry to be a burden. I'm used to being very independent. Me too. Were you very independent before? Before what? Before a good accident. What accident? Oh. I'm sorry. I always ask stupid questions. My name's Margaret. Thanks for helping me. John. I don't know why I bought these. I don't even smoke. Please you smoke, John? What do you do, John? I was a rat catcher. Oh, that's, ew. <laughs> that's horrible. No, it was great. I liked it anyway. I don't know what to do now. I was a doctor. A good doctor. I have to go back to my surgery tomorrow and have a check up. By a doctor sitting at my desk. I was a rat catcher. I'm not anymore. <coughs> I go to college now. Something else came up. That's the great thing about life. You don't know what's around the next corner. My life took a turn for the worse. Depends on how you look at it. Things happen for a reason, you know. <coughs> when I was a girl, I wanted to be an actor. But in my family, you had to do something academic and pursuing an acting career was not an option. But I wish I'd do what I wanted to do now. If I'd have known that I was going to have a stroke, I would have done so many things differently. It's too late now. To so expect your life to go back how it was? That'll be like Manchester City winning a trophy. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. I go to this drama group. My mates, they take the piss. But I don't care anyway. You should come along one night. I, I don't know. No, you should come along. It's good fun. You meet your friends. Have a laugh. I'll, I'll think about it. All right then, Margaret, once you've thought about it, will you let me know yet, please? Yeah. Okay then. demonstration, yeah, that my doctor was doing about eugenics. He said that she was talking about me, like I was a burden. Oh, I'm sick of hearing about this. Don't even know what you're going on about anyway. So stop feeling sorry for yourself and get out from under my feet. What? You mean, like, get a job? Like at the baths? Listen, how would you manage? You need too much help. Well, man, what do you want? You want me out of the way and then you'd all mad to look after myself. What do you want, man? An easy life, that's all. to read us a poem. Oh. Aww. Entitled Gentle and Kind. Oh. Aww. 
I am a girl who is gentle and kind, pure of heart and sound of mind, generous and loving and good as can be. But I'm on you now, you don't mess with me. Don't mess with me, I know what you do. And you don't frighten me, but I'm not frightening you. I have a secret, and you know I do. Up until now, there was only us name. But I'm ready to say it, I no longer fear. I'm glad you could make it, it's great that you're here. Don't mess with me, I'm much stronger than you. Because I have to be, take on what you do. I am very nice natured, and life is a real. But if you upset me, I too can be cruel. Messing with me will get you into trouble. Whatever you've done will be done to your double. Don't mess with me, I know what you do. And you don't frighten me, but I know I frighten you. You can come quite helpless, but you are mistaken. You could not imagine the guts that it's taken. To be in the spotlight, but still speak my mind. Not bad for a girl, but so gentle and kind. Don't mess with me, I'm much stronger than you. Because I have to be, to take on what you do. Oh no, I'm not nervous, in fact I'm prepared. To tell you, I know you're incredibly scared. Of what I could say, to make you feel smart. I bet you thought this day would not come at all. Don't mess with me, I'm all rubbing my skin. I never said you could be, I never let you in. You could not imagine how strong I am here. My mind is a weapon and sharp as a blade. My body is ready for each blow it takes. In my life, there's no room for silly mistakes. I am ready to take on your hold on me. I'm breaking these chains and setting me free. If I tell the world of what you did then, you will never, ever hurt me again. Don't mess with me. You're being over me as food. If I can take on all this, I sure can take on you. But since it's a real, I'm so lovely and kind. I will put my revenge to the back of my mind, so you won't be exposed for your crimes or regret, or the pain that you caused me. Well, at least not yet. And that was Danielle. Such an unpleasant point for a girl with such a lovely face. We do not tolerate antisocial behaviour on the spaz factor. Now get out! <laughs> Danielle is now going to be escorted off the premises and issued with an ASPO order. Don't applaud her, ladies and gentlemen. That will only encourage her. Enjoy the rest of your night. had a stroke to say. You'll have to change it now, love. You can't cope with that. I know. Why don't we just call you Marge? 
Don't be tight, Jed. Don't be mean, Jenny. I'm used to that kind of abuse. Every day, something else. I'm either invisible every time I go to a shop. Oh, I'm a showpiece fearful to smile that. A woman I gave a prescription to three months ago for what? Put me on the head, the usual way, in a cafe. Put me on the head, like a dog, with a wart. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, someone throw her a biscuit. I know what you mean. I mean, being a doctor and that, but you always thought you were great. Well, now you're not. Welcome to the real world. You'll be getting more shit for night than that, believe me. And do you know why? Because of people like you that makes us out to be third-class citizens. That's why. You had the power to make positive changes, but no, you chose to keep me from the things I wanted to do. You were not capable of doing that job, Jimmy. My friend Eno has arthritis in her knee, and her doctor said when she's middle-aged she's going to struggle walking, but she's still a fucking trolley dollar. <laughs> I've lived in a different world, and believe me, believe me, it's much easier, and a more able person is better suited to that job. More able? Have you seen them down at our baths? And let me tell you, love, we live in the same world now. Anyway, snap out of it, go on with it, what night you'd have I? Leave me alone, Jenny. This is my doctor. She believes in this thing called eugenics. So if something's up with the baby, we can get rid of it. It's happening in Holland, and if she has it her way, it'll be happening there too. I bet she changed the views now. No, I haven't, actually. All right, everybody, settle down. Margaret is entitled to her opinions, you know. Right, why don't we show Margaret the work we've been doing on disabled people's Roman wartime, shall we? Right, everybody off stage, we just need to be on. Oh. Ladies and everybody, do you want to take a seat over there, Margaret, for us? Nice and loud, give me your best shot. One point five million disabled people work during the war. Douglas Bardock is one of Britain's most famous disabled war heroes. Douglas lost both his legs in a plane crash in nineteen thirty, but went on to rejoin the RAF as a pilot during World War Two. After the war, he fought tirelessly for the rights of other people with disabilities, particularly for the right to work. Douglas was honoured in 1976 with a knighthood for his contribution and work on the behalf of the disabled. After his death in 1982, his friends and family set up the Douglas Bader Foundation so that his work on the behalf of the disabled could continue. <coughs> a disabled person who fights back is not disabled, but inspired. <coughs> Eric Page was born three months premature and as a result had defective vision. After Dunkirk, when we virtually had no army, my husband volunteered to join up and men were so badly needed that he was accepted. He was posted to the Pioneers course which consisted of men with slight disability. On the 27th of September 1940, we really did expect the German invasion. My husband's regiment was moved to Salesville, Sussex, where he and two other men were each given a rifle and one round of ammunition. Of these three men, one was doubled over with a hernia and couldn't stand up straight. The second was as deaf as a post and had to be told when things were flying about. And my husband's vision was so bad that he couldn't tell <coughs> when from cold. And that, what was, that is what was defending our country from an enemy invasion. One day, Eric was given a message for an officer on the other side of the field. The officer asked how he had come. My husband said, over the field, sir. The officer nearly hit the roof. Did you not read the notice? Keep out. That field is heavily mined. My husband couldn't read the notice. 
He was recommended for promotion, but when the medical board found his vision was so bad that they promptly discharged him. He used to play his accordion of an evening in the local pub whilst his platoon was posting in New Cross London during the Blitz. He did much to boost the morale of the other men. Horace Blackburn, who had been disabled since childhood, worked fitting limbs to wounded soldiers. At this time, veterans say they were given five or six shillings for a lost leg and four shillings for a lost arm. Describing his experiences, Horace said, I told my mother, and she said that that is what happens in war. Nobody wants them, and they are fobbed off with a bit of a pension. This is Albert Bevan. Albert worked in a munitions factory from 1939 to 1945. He also volunteered for the Red Cross, and during the Blitz was responsible for saving the lives of many women and children. To the different is a cry. On the smoke filled sky, through the broken building, once held strong, cradle them, dry their tears, as his own fears. Carried her to the evening chair. Pray, Percy Peppin. Well done, group. Let's give him a round of applause, shall we? Change the world for the better. Well, you have to look at people differently, not as genes, but as individuals with personalities and goals and feelings. Think about the here and now, and make positive changes. You could probably do that. No one listens to me. You have to understand that I have a lot to get used to yet. Well, I do understand that. I've had a lot of trouble in my life, a lot of hurt and pain that has always come from supposedly perfect people. The kind that you think should be carrying the human race through. People that resent you, abuse you, ridicule you. Are they the stronger ones? Hey, Margaret, <coughs> your husband's at the front. Oh, oh, thank you. I think he's taking you to a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you next week. I think I'll be coming back. Nice one. Well, enjoy your meal. Okay. It's all right for some of it. Thank you. Bye. See you then, Margaret. Good man, that now. Could just go with a really nice Indian. My favourite. Oh, cool, I love it. I'm pretty sure it's making me really hungry. That's hanging. You think so? Why, yeah. love it? No. I'm fucking leaving if she's coming back. She's too old anyway. I thought it was meant to be a youth group. Give her a chance, Jen. And time to settle in. Anyway, come on, we better get off. The bus is here. Come on.
would you like? I'll have the pumpkin risotto, please, and a glass of Sauvignon Blanc. And what would she like? Margaret? Um, a wagon for her to ask me. Oh, would you please ask my wife directly what oh, she would like? Oh, why? Sorry. What would you like? I would like the... Yes. 
I needed the time out. I'll just go and tell her you're here. Kitchen. 
and your bathroom and bedroom need to come downstairs. Your house is big enough, so it shouldn't be a problem. I know it seems like a lot, but it's just little changes, really. Thanks. That was kind of you. It's amazing how you can see all that just by looking around once. I thought you hated my guts. Don't be daft. I know I've been an ignorant bitch as well myself, haven't I? Mm. I know it was you who had a word with the bats. No, I didn't. I had a word with the new doctor. His legs. He is nice, actually. <coughs> I like his reading materials. Loads of laws about now. I need to get out. Dunes were planning to bore me with the holiday photos. I was planning to be a pretend to be a sweet. Do you want to go out somewhere? I don't know, what are you thinking of? I was thinking of maybe going to school over for the day. Oh, why? You've been on Pimp My Wheelchair and had it fit with a jetpack. <laughs> <laughs> Think on your wheels, love. Even Scarborough's going uphill. They're slow or going down very fast. If only the world actually was flat. Hey, Holland's meant to be flat. Uh, probably not a good idea. No, probably not. Come on, let's go and get a train somewhere whilst Stu's doing your ironing. I know, I feel terrible sometimes. Why? She gets paid for it, don't she? Yeah. Come on, where do you want to go? How about we go to the library, sit down and write something that we can perform at Proud in the World with what I know and what you know. I think we could come up with something good between us. Now nah, I can't be asked. Oh, that's nice. Oh, come on. Come on then. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming this evening. This is a short play that I have written along with other members of the group. It's influenced by my experiences both as a doctor and as an individual learning to live with disability. I hope you enjoy it. Carl and Katha are having a baby and have an appointment with their doctor to discuss some news. Oh, hello. Um, Kathy and Carl Gibson? Oh, hi. Um, right. Your screening results have come back and it's not good news, I'm afraid. I'm afraid your baby's been diagnosed with Down syndrome. A consultation has been booked for Monday, so with your agreement the procedure will begin the following morning, so if you have your hospital bag ready. I don't understand what you mean. What would this procedure do for our baby? I understand this is a lot to take in at this late stage of the pregnancy, but with the condition of the foetus we would urge you to consider all the options available for you. 
we managed to book you a place in advance, so if you do go ahead with the procedure, it is available for you. We managed to get you a place at very short notice, which is very fortunate. You're talking about abortion? You want me to get rid of this baby, don't you? I couldn't possibly advise you either way, but there, there are issues that you need to consider, and unfortunately, you don't have much time. We are doing everything in our power to ensure that you have all the facts. Ready? And you're asking us to kill him? I am not asking you to do any such thing. The decision, as I've said, is yours and something you and Carl have to discuss and come to your own decision on. It is my job to make you aware of how potentially difficult it will be having a child. The implications of the, the, the life that you have with your child. Okay, I want to guess now. No, actually. Pop up. Oh, that's great. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. We can't go back now, we'll have to have that. I think Mark Susan's eyes are the best for you, too. They're massive, Adam. That is going to look shit. We'll have to make up for it now, like a big one. No. No. What you want us to do is kill our baby boy. We have thought about all of this. How dare you make those decisions for us and think you can take our baby? I understand this is a lot to take in, and you are shocked. But I have seen families suffer first-hand with similar conditions. Have you considered that your child will need intensive care at home for their entire lives? I don't know if you both have careers, but this is something else to think about, as this will affect you both in a very profound way. And something I ask all couples to think about is, if for any reason that you split up, because I have seen relationships suffer, and believe me, with the best will in the world, it can happen. How will you manage on your own? What's the choice of figure then? Well, it's a future figure and a brain handball. It's slim and simple, big and bulky, tall and dark, or short and sharp, and options to mix again are part of luck. Let's go for the mix, and tall and sharp. Tall and sharp, okay. Oh, I don't believe it, I think I might have. Yeah, I went into a catwalk by accident. Well, it can't be that, though. Big and dark. Great. So I'll be with the Don't forget that. Think about the expense. You may have to move home or have your home adapted. Transportation needs for the rest of their lives. It's not easy being a parent, but I feel it's my duty to let you know how difficult it will be caring for a disabled child and later a disabled adult. I don't think we thought it through properly. I mean, I love you, but I don't think we're ready for that kind of commitment. I mean, when I put my baby pen into your eyes dropped, it, it was a bit of a laugh, but now it's downloaded. I don't think we're ready for that kind of commitment. I mean, I'll transfer funds into your account, but I don't want to upgrade if you just yet. Alright. I think. Treat me like a virus now. Blocking it from messenger like spyware. Well, think again. You've agreed to the terms and conditions. No, I'm doing a scan now. I'm not responsible for this. Do a scan, I'll do. Who's this journey? Don't you think we've thought about all of this? Isn't life always a risk? And let me make this clear. I do not want to abort my child. We've accepted the fact that we are having a baby. And there was not one thing you said today that was positive. Not one thing... We will bring our baby up like all of the parents, Doctor, with love, with fears and a whole load of mistakes, because that's what parents do. He is our child and we will do our best for him. He'll be as much of a burden and as much of a joy as any other child. You will never see a member of my family again and you will never get the chance to meet our son. This is based on a real event. The little boy is now at nursery. 
and although Adam and Eve are fictional, fictional characters, they represent our search for perfection, an ideal that can never be reached. In Holland, where adult euthanasia is now legal, it will soon be the first country in the world to allow baby euthanasia as well. Compassion 